Hey all lads and lasses, damn fire here, and today something a little bit different. We are checking out irregular recruits. There's going to be sort of like a little bit of a review. It's a roguelike army deck builder built by a single dev, so hats off to him because that's quite a bit of work. Still in the works, more content's going to be added and coming. All the updates will be free. As this is a premium game, that means you have to pay for it. It's on Android only at the current moment and is priced at 4.49 US dollars, 3.99 euros and 3 pound 30 for us Brits. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Regular Recruits is a premium single player army builder roguelike for Android devices. Irregular Recruits combines roguelike deck builders like Slay the Spire with card-based auto chess like Hearthstone Battlegrounds. With the unique twist that your army is, your life total. When your recruits die, they are lost forever, and when your army is dead, so are you. Irregular Recruits is a true indie game made by one passionate player, developer, and the game is and will always be premium. No in-app purchases, no internet connection, and no ads. So let's look at the gameplay and the breadth of the mechanics in this game from crazy uh, interactions with uh, your units and stuff like that to a host of commanders that you can choose. There are eight commanders, one being a cat. And yeah, there's just literally like, I think the dev said there's 200 different units you can pick up in this game, which is quite impressive. They have special abilities, so some of them uh, do things like your summon abilities will trigger twice. Uh, you can have things that uh, when another enemy unit enters the battlefield, it does something like loses three, uh, three HP and three attack. You have rally as well, so if something takes damage, for example, it can rally troops in, or if you kill something, it will rally troops in straight from the deck and not from the hand. And if you place something onto the battlefield, it can deal damage and stuff like that. So an absolute like plethora of mechanics to play around with here and combos to create. So definitely worth a look at if you're into that kind of thing. The roguelite element is also really quite cool. It allows uh, your well you to design your deck around these sort of combos, and it kind of gives you this hard choice of making well do i want lots of units in my deck because your deck is your hp if your deck dies everything dies in your deck that is gg that is game over so really quite an interesting take on uh, this style of game for certain so you're, you're sat there balancing well i've got this really good combo do i only want to keep my deck down to those four cards or five cards that make this like really powerful combo and if it fails well then you're dead or do you try and you know get as many units as completely possible within your deck and go from there and try and have just as much stuff as you can chuck out as humanly able to turns are quite interesting so you only have two uh, actions you can perform so you have two energy so two actions you can perform each turn uh, and those actions are removing a card and putting it back in your deck from the tabletop or placing units down is also an action and using your commander's abilities is also an action so you need to be quite careful on how you build your deck and uh, bearing in mind that in most cases you can only get like maybe two units on the deck whereas the enemy as they get stronger and stronger depicted by these stars um, they get more energy and have the ability to you know place more units than you are able to uh, Obviously, with some of the mechanics in this, you can get around that. For example, I'm using the cat uh, who has summons, and I picked up these infernal squirrels because they're adorable and carrying this little tiny skull. But on top of that, they also double the amount of summons I can take. And with one of my summons being two summons, that doubles that summon. So now I'm getting four summons. Now I managed to find four of these. So I have four infernal squirrels that I put on the board and then every time I click the button to summon two summons, it doubles it four times. So that's a lot of summons and that's a, allowed me to uh, get through this quite easily. The other commanders also have mechanics such as healing and stuff like that. The very first one is a cleric. He has the ability to heal your units 
Uh, there is a undead cleric, which buffs your non-undead units when undead units die. So you got some really interesting interactions with the commanders, and they change how you play a deck quite a bit, giving you a lot of variety in how to play uh, as this game releases. At the current moment, I've managed to win the game, uh, which is get all the way to the end and beat the boss with, I think, five of the eight commanders so far. There's a couple that I find quite difficult that I'm still trying to do. Uh, but yeah, so, so far, I've actually put quite a lot of time into this game, like several hours worth of gameplay, just trying to work out different decks and play around a bit and have a bit of fun and work out some really interesting combos. Um, so far, the cat is probably my favorite. It's either the cat or the squirrel commander. They, they're just a lot of fun and you can uh, play around with them quite a bit and they do some interesting things. Furthermore, on the gameplay, you start on the far left hand side and you have paths to choose. Each one of those paths has an event or an enemy at the end of it, so you have to go through enemies to get to the end. And these enemies are usually quite nicely flavoured, so you'll have like a demon enemy and it'll run whole demon decks, or you'll have an undead enemy running undead decks. Uh, animals will run animal decks, so on and so forth. There are also events, and these can range from giving you free cards to having to pay for cards to flat out trying to kill whatever's trying to sell you or give you stuff. So you can have a bit of fun there and uh, role play a little bit with the event. At the end of a series, like a section, uh, you'll have a town. This allows you to purchase new cards. Uh, you get gold from your battles and when you win. Also, when you win uh, combat, you have a choice of three cards. Uh, that can be from healing one of your cards that died within a battle to also uh, having a choice of two other cards. These are usually flavoured within the enemy that you've just faced. So if you kill a demon, normally one of those options will be a demon that you can pick. Uh, so far as I can tell anyway. At the towns, again, you could just randomly change uh, what roles you see and try and find the cards that you want. This does cost gold. This is the only use for gold at the moment, so do think about spending it if you are looking to increase your deck pool or looking for specific cards. After the town, the enemies do get noticeably more difficult. So in the first area, you'll find one and two star enemies in the second er second area you'll find two three star and all the way up to four and five star and the boss is a uh, five star himself there is currently only one boss in the game and if you kill him you get a little crown on your commander's head and allowing you to go back to the start menu and restarting with a different commander or maybe trying to play around with different deck combos with the same commanders. There is quite a lot of replayability in this game, which is what I really like, and the fact that the dev has said new content is going to be coming out. So, you know, bear that in mind. At the current moment, one commander, but there might be several commanders further down the line. There might be new um, bosses at the end that you can take on. The boss at the end of this is actually quite difficult, and uh, I've only managed to beat in it beat him with like very certain types of decks so far. I'm still playing around a bit uh, though for that. Currently, this game is only available and on Android. Uh, there is no cloud save either. I have mentioned that to the dev and he is gonna look into the cloud save now so you can have it on multiple devices. Um, because it was a bit awkward. I loaded up Bluestack to get this recorded and only had, uh, well, had nothing unlocked because uh, there's no cloud save between uh, devices. But there is iOS on its way. He doesn't know when exactly, uh, but it is coming. It's difficult to apparently uh, do stuff for iOS. So he's doing the Android first, getting that out, getting that ready to go, uh, well, releasing today fixing everything that could be going wrong with it, adding maybe some new content, and then looking at iOS down in the future. But yeah, I'm already on about six, seven hours gameplay on this, and I've not had the key for that long, so I've put a lot of time into this. I've just found it really enjoyable. Like I said, the, the deck building and mechanics are really quite interesting, so that's keeping me quite entertained. And having the ability to, you know, change out your entire gameplay style for between commanders and try different decks out 
uh, is really quite interesting. So if you're into like mechanics and trying to find the most broken thing absolutely possible, uh, play the cat because the summon thing is pretty brutal to be honest. Uh, but other than that, uh, there are lots of interesting interactions uh, that you can play around with. Uh, there's a unit that if it takes damage, it summons your entire deck on uh, yeah, everything in your deck, not your hand, but everything in your deck onto the field. So if you can get him out, he takes a little bit of damage. You could get like a board full of like a hundred dudes that the enemy is now going to have to deal with. Options are quite limited in this game with a uh, couple of little sound uh, sliders and that's more or less it. You can either turn off the auto battle after you've run out of uh, your or used up your energy um, and you can also get it to auto play your battles so you can sit there and watch and see how the AI handles your deck. But yeah, other than that, highly recommend this game. It's quite cheap for what it is. It's going to get more content. There's going to be free updates. It's premium, so there's no ads or anything like that. You don't need an internet connection, which is amazing as well. So definitely check it out. Highly recommend. I'll have a link down in the description below uh, to the Play Store where you can go pick this up from. And have a good one, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you next time.